the Pixie Hack Challenge. Some ideas with what you can do with a cheap Pixie radio transceiver kit. In a previous video, I did a review of the Pixie transceiver. It's a QRP crystal controlled transceiver kit that you can buy for a few dollars. I concluded that although it might be fun to build, it was strictly a novelty project. Its crystal control, low power and wide receiver made getting contacts difficult and you'd be having to call CQ for ages before someone came back. Nevertheless, it could still be useful for someone who wanted to build a first kit and for whom it didn't matter if they got it wrong due to the low price. Another tack is to think of other things you can do with the Pixie kit, not necessarily a transceiver. This is what this video is about. I'll go through the Pixie circuit diagram, describe what stages are in it and give some ideas of other things you might be able to do with the Pixie kit. You will require a few other parts, but the chances are they'll either be in your junk box or very cheap to buy. I've called this the Pixie Hack Challenge. See what you can do with the Pixie kit or a few other components besides. I'll give some ideas in this video, but that's just the start. If you've got other thoughts, then please leave them in the comments below. Just in case you're not familiar with the Pixie transceiver, here's a completed example with a few mods. The board is about five centimeters by five centimeters. It has one LM386 and a couple of transistors. This is what you get for your four to six dollar Pixie kit. The printed circuit board, the components, plugs and sockets, and if you're lucky, a circuit diagram. As there's so many things you can do with the Pixie, I suggest ordering several kits so you can try a few of them. When you buy a Pixie, you don't get a lot of guidance. Just a list of parts, the board layout, and a circuit diagram. Just going through the important parts of the Pixie circuit. In the top left is the power socket and the reverse polarity protection diode. Q1 is a 7 MHz crystal oscillator. Q2 on transmit is a RF power amplifier. This is a low pass filter which goes to the antenna connection. On receive Q2 also operates as a mixer diode. That's why you don't need transmit receive mixing. It's simple, it's crude, but it does work well, sort of. And the LM386 down here is the audio amplifier. There's a few other subtleties of the Pixie's design, including a diode which switches in during transmit. That causes a transmit receive frequency offset, which you need to have in a direct conversion CW transceiver. And here is what at first glance looks like a volume control, but isn't. The function of this control is to vary the amount of transmit receive frequency offset. If you're going to be modifying your Pixie, you won't necessarily have components in the exact positions as they are in the circuit. And the functions of the transistors may well be different. What are things you can do with a modified Pixie? And when I say modified, I suggest if you are going to be making these sorts of radical changes, you don't build the Pixie first up. Otherwise, you'll be pulling out components, unsoldering and possibly damaging them. Instead, think of some ideas you want to do with your Pixie. Maybe make them up as a prototype in a breadboard or just solder the parts together. And then when you're happy, solder the rest onto the Pixie circuit board. What are things you can do with the Pixie? I won't give a lot of circuits or detailed descriptions, but I should be able to give you some ideas and then you can go off further and get more information and try some experimenting.
That's the Pixie Hack Challenge. Are you up for it? Study the circuit diagram, think of what you want to build, and see if you are able to modify the Pixie and get it to do what you want.